Successful fisheries management can be challenging. It requires a consideration of economic, social, biological and environmental factors. Furthermore, multiple stakeholders could be involved and each of them could have a range of objectives that they want to achieve. The Western and Central Pacific Fisheries Commission is developing harvest strategies for the four main tuna species in the Western and Central Pacific Ocean. Skipjack, South Pacific albacore, yellowfin and big eye tuna. These four stocks make up the world's largest tuna fisheries. It's important that stakeholders drive the harvest strategies process. It's their fishery after all. In this video, we're we'll looking at the science behind the harvest strategies, the thoughts and perspectives of the harvest strategy approach from individuals who are most closely connected to the tuna fisheries in our region. Hi Marcelo. Hi Marino. What do you think are the key challenges confronting the tuna fishing industry in the Western and Central Pacific Ocean? Overfishing is the main concerning challenge for the region and the industry is fighting, trying to demonstrate that we are doing the right thing, fishing in, in the right way, that we don't cross or we respect the target reference point. And why do you think harvest strategies are important for addressing some of these challenges? Most importantly, having these in place harvest strategies we can demonstrate responsible sourcing to the market. That is what they want to see on us and responsible management of our fishery while bringing economic benefit to the Pacific countries. And do you think industry will benefit from the improved transparency and confidence under a harvest strategy approach? Definitely. Industry doesn't like uncertainties and harvest strategies provide clear rules for the industry what to do. So we can see how decisions are made based on science, the transparency how the harvest strategies are developed give us confidence on how the decision making has been done, but also give us confidence that we are managing our fishery in a responsible manner. Well, thanks Graham for making the time. Could you maybe describe the purpose of a harvest strategy? Yeah, a harvest strategy is designed to achieve management objectives for a stock and a fishery. And they aim to do that despite all the uncertainties that we have in terms of our data, our knowledge, and how the fishery is behaving. So they aim to essentially agree the rules of the game before that game is played. Can you provide some of the critical elements and insights of a harvest strategy and how these all kind of work together? There are a number of different elements to a harvest strategy, but two key ones are firstly the management objectives, which helps define the sorts of performance that stakeholders and managers want to see from the fishery, be that catch levels, profitability, or levels of employment that they want to have within the fishery. The second is the harvest control rule, which predefines the management action that would be taken. What are the respective roles of both stakeholders and scientists when we look at the development of a harvest strategy? So stakeholders are critical in this whole process. In particular, in defining the management objectives, the things that they want to achieve, and that's the managers of the fishery themselves, but also the wider stakeholder group of industry and non-governmental organizations and scientists as well. What do you think are the key challenges confronting the tuna fishing industry in the Western and Central Pacific Ocean? Well, Marina, one challenge that really stands out for me is, is the fact that we really need a clear understanding and application of a practical management regime that meets the different aspirations of each country. While we can say that there's not one size that fits all, most of us really want to ensure that the healthy tuna stocks stay healthy and the depleted stocks fully recover. And of course, these in turn provide long-term sustainable and profitable fisheries for our countries. And why do you think harvest strategies are important for addressing some of these challenges? Harvest strategies pose really a lot more merit over the more traditional fisheries management regimes. I think they help to give stakeholders a much clearer, longer-term vision of a sustainable stock in fishery. 
perhaps most importantly, they outline how that will be achieved. And it's really a very transparent approach. I think that if we want to have healthy and productive tuna fisheries in the long term, developing harvest strategies is probably the one thing that we can, as stewards of the world's largest tuna stocks, must agree and we must make progress on. And also, I still think that general stakeholder capacity building is really crucial so that all parties, be they government or industry, they have the necessary knowledge and skills to play an active part in this process. Fisheries managers across the Pacific really need to be united in this. What are the key challenges facing the tuna industry in the WCPO? Well, there are many, and there are many inputs that are, are beyond our control in terms of the economics of doing business in the Pacific in a global economy. However, harvesting the tuna resource sustainably is one key challenge that Pitya can have a say in. We have seen a decline in CPUE over the last 20 years, and we need to implement measures at a regional level to change this concerning trend. For Pitya, harvest strategies are in fact at the top of the list to address these key challenges. While we applaud the introduction of measures to introduce harvest strategies, the members of Pitya recognise that the delays in implementation are clearly putting Pacific Island interests behind the interests of others. How do you think industry will benefit from a harvest strategy approach for tuna and the WCPO? The timely implementation of harvest strategies proven management tool in the best fisheries worldwide will surely benefit the industry and the Pacific overall. Of that there is no doubt. Hi Francisco. Hey Marino Kirana. What do you think are the key challenges you see confronting the tuna resources and fisheries in the WCPO? One is the right decision making in terms of management. Things have changed a lot over the years and the action-reaction component of decision-making needs to be faster. And that's what I, I really appreciate from the whole process of harvest strategies, is that you can make decisions much faster because you discuss it before, not after. From your perspective, what are the benefits of harvest strategies for the tuna resource owners, the peoples of the Pacific Island countries and territories? The benefit for me of harvest strategy is that you have already a preset plan of what to do when X or Y happens. It's agreed before, no after. And I think that is fundamental. We need to be able to make decisions fast and effectively because there are too many variables otherwise that could complicate the process if not. Can you provide a brief description of the Commission's commitment to date to develop harvest strategies? Well, the Commission adopted a management measure in 2014, committing its membership to adopt harvest strategies for the management of uh, key tuna stocks. The work on harvest strategy development is ongoing and we at the Commission Secretariat are committed to supporting this work. How do you think harvest strategies will improve the management process for the key tuna stocks in the WCPO? The key thing is that the harvest strategies will introduce a more proactive approach to fisheries management by relieving the pressures and delays that are normally associated from negotiating management actions when a stock is in a critical biological status or not meeting the economic and social objective for the fisheries. Why are tuna fisheries so important to FFA members? FFA's work is to ensure the sustainable use of our offshore fisheries resources, most importantly tuna, which are so critically important to our Pacific people. Our Pacific people are custodians of the world's largest tuna resources. And our Pacific home is the only region where all major tuna stocks are biologically healthy. Tuna contributes to food security and has cultural significance. For several of our countries, it provides a large part of their government revenue, which can be used for development such as much needed infrastructure. Tuna also provides employment opportunities. So the stakes are always high and underlines the importance of our work together to sustainably manage these valuable resources. How do you think the harvest strategies will improve the way the tuna resources are managed for the benefit of Pacific Island countries? Our Pacific people by far have the most to lose 
from poor management of our tuna fisheries. And poor fisheries management is often associated with inaction or reactionary decision-making. A harvest strategy is a decision-making framework that specifies predetermined management action in a fishery based on how that fishery is performing. So by its very nature, a harvest strategy ensures increased predictability and transparency of management decisions while achieving sustainable fisheries. I firmly believe that harvest strategies will be fundamental to continuing to secure benefits from our tuna resources for our Pacific people. Great, thanks for your time. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It was my pleasure to join you. Thanks for having me. And thank you, Marino. Thank you for having us on board. Top line, Marino. It's always good to see you, mate. Thanks, uh, Marino.